Good afternoon, everybody. It's two o'clock. And just as a reminder, I'm trying to go live at either 10 o'clock or two o'clock Eastern time. I'm in Findlay, Ohio. My husband and I are in Findlay and having that time schedule might allow us to join here together. If you do join live, I think you have to have a YouTube account in order to type in the chat. There's a live chat you can actually type in and I can see your your comments and your anything you want to say back to me and then we can have a conversation that way. But I do think you have to have a YouTube account to participate in that live chat. But at any rate, we'll figure that out as we go right now. I just wanted to talk about this idea of a psalm that says, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It's in Psalm, I think it's 118, verse 24. I looked it up a little bit earlier, hopefully to remember that reference. And I think that's what it what it was. Um, but have you ever had, I'm sure you probably have, just days where you're trying to rejoice and be glad in this day that God has made. And you're just thinking like, what is there to rejoice about? Or just knowing, even knowing salvation, but having grief in your heart or hardship or really hard things around you and just feeling like it's some of the things that the Bible says, just feeling like they don't actually make sense or they're just not true for you or they're true sometimes, but not always. Like, if, I don't know if you've ever had that that feeling. Um, one of the other passages in the Bible that comes to my mind that's kind of like that is the parts in the Bible that talk about suffering and to count it all joy whenever you go through trials or hard things. It's like, I don't know about you, but it doesn't come naturally to me to count it joy or think of things and be joyful about them when I'm going through them, knowing that my character will, will be growing and I will, you know, grow in endurance and patience. Those are great things, but in the midst of the pain and the wrestling, it's not easy to do that. Well, when, whenever we go to the scriptures and we look at things that are true, or we start to think about the way that God thinks his ways, he's, he's bigger than we are. He's higher than we are. We don't think the same way that God thinks. And a lot of times as you start living in faith and you actually start walking with God, what will happen is you'll encounter situations that cause cognitive dissonance, which is this fancy term for when what you expect and what you think and then what you're actually experiencing, they, they cause two conflicting beliefs. And you don't know what to do with those conflicting beliefs because in your mind, like you you have to make a decision, like which one do you believe? And so actually I looked up this definition. Cognitive dissonance is the mental discomfort that results from holding two conflicting beliefs, values, or attitudes. And cognitive dissonance, there's a, there's a bunch of things I could say about it and I, I won't today, but this idea that you know, if you're somebody who doesn't believe in God and then something happens and it like makes you think, wow, maybe, maybe God is real. That could be an example, I think, of cognitive dissonance where you're like, well, I don't believe in God, but like, what about this other thing? And then in your mind, there's a wrestling and ultimately your, your brain, I think, likes to have one, one belief. It doesn't really like that, that conflict. And so, you know, enough dissonance and enough um, evidence or facts or experiences in one direction or the other kind of lends itself to where we might fall in what we truly believe or how beliefs can be shaped. Beliefs can be shaped positively, negatively. They can be shaped uh, by outside forces. A lot of times um, what we believe can be a result of what happens to us even if we believe lies about ourselves or we believe like that we're not worth anything, that's not true, but beliefs can be shaped because of just what happens to us. So anyway, this is the day the Lord has made. And if you're not feeling like rejoicing today, that's okay. I, a lot of times I like to, I like to observe when a day feels like, um, 
like what's what, like what the Bible says and what I feel like when they're not the same, like when I'm going through suffering and it says to count it all joy. And I'm thinking, I don't, I don't really feel joyful or see the joy, or I can't even see that because sometimes as you go through things and you actually trust in God's faithfulness and you see how, how he works, sometimes that takes going through something to see on the other side. I've started to really realize that the Bible, you know, what it says to rejoice and be glad in a day, there really are things to be glad about. There are even in the, even in the worst of times. And I know there's probably some people who are watching who are going through things that I couldn't imagine myself. And I don't, I don't in any way expect to say, oh, you should be able to rejoice through something that's just horrific. Um, but the idea of, of cognitive dissonance and the fact that faith a lot of times will challenge your beliefs as you start to see things that are real. And when God is faithful, our beliefs are reshaped as we see his faithfulness, despite what we might originally think. And that's, I think, one of the ways spiritual formation or how our faith is formed. I think a lot of times our faith is formed by what we go through that challenges us to uh, rethink maybe some of the thoughts that we've had about God. If you don't think God's faithful and then he is faithful, it's like, okay, well, maybe I was wrong that he, he is faithful. So I just wanted to talk about that a little bit today.